Welcome to the Ignatius Press Podcast. I'm Mark Brumley. I hope you enjoy the discussion in this episode. For more information about Ignatius Press, check out our website at ignatius.com. To our Ignatius Press Podcast Cum Video, this is Father Fessio S.J., editor of Ignatius Press, speaking with Phil Lawler, former editor of Catholic Report. That's, of course, the most glorious title you've had. Uh, we're here to talk about a book which he edited called Diogenes Unveiled. It's a phenomenal book, and we're going to tell you why. Uh, it's basically a collection of writings by Father Paul Mankowski of the Society of Jesus, a good friend of mine and of Phil's, who passed away uh, sooner than we hoped at the age of 59. But during his 59 years, he accomplished a great deal. So, Phil, before we find out about how you met him, let's talk about ourselves. Uh, you used to be the editor of Catholic Report many, many years ago. Well, not, that so many. Yeah. <laughs> not so very many years ago, but yes. I was, and I'm terrible about dates, but I do I do remember it. I'm not so old, I can't remember. All right. Well, then, uh, when did you meet Father Mankowski? Do you remember that? I'm a little vague on that because, you know, there are people in your life, and as a matter of fact, you're another one. I'm not sure when I met you. Um, but I think I met him in jail. <laughs> uh, I, we were both involved in Operation Rescue. I was I was aware of his existence. I knew him by name and reputation, but I think the first time I actually spoke with him was in Brookline County Jail. Okay. Well, I, I my memory is also vague on many, many things, especially when I meet people or have met them. But I remember exactly when I met him. It was in October 1987 because I was uh, – at the Senate of Bishops on the laity as a peritus, uh, which is supposed to be an expert, but I would just say more an observer. Uh, and while I was staying at the Casa del Clero, which is the, one of the houses where Senate participants were staying, I got a call from the, the Bellarmino. The Bellarmino is the residence in Rome uh, for Jesuit graduate students. And I think it was Father Peter Ryan called me. I didn't know who he was, but he said, Father Fessio, we understand you're here in Rome. Uh, could you uh, come and we just like to talk to you? I said, oh, sure, fine. So I went over there. It's not, not a, kind of a short walk. And there was Paul Minkowski and Paul, uh, Peter Ryan and a couple of others. And they said, well, Father, here's what we want to know. Uh, what advice can you give us on how to remain Orthodox Catholics and still remain Jesuits. Well, that was my first encounter with Paul Mankowski. Right. And that was kind of typical, wasn't it? That that uh, has the ring of authenticity, yes. <laughs> so the title of this book is Diogenes Unveiled. Uh, tell us who Diogenes is in a contemporary, we know who he was as the Greek philosopher, but I mean, what? Uh, how, who, who is Diogenes? Well, <clears throat> um, it's a bit of an oversimplification to say that for our purposes, Father Mankowski was Diogenes, but it's not, it, it's really pretty accurate. As you know, we began this whole thing with um, a feature for Catholic World Report, the monthly magazine, where we had a last page, the final page we called The Last Word, and we tried to put something a bit lighthearted or, or satirical in it. And he was one of many contributors to that column. And we used many different pseudonyms. And over time, um, he emerged as, well, the best of the, the, the satirists, certainly. And Diogenes emerged as the best of the pseudonyms. And then when I went off to do my online work with Catholic World News, he continu continued to write there as Diogenes. So uh, again, there were others who wrote under that pseudonym, but he was the best and the most prolific. And so this collection is of essays which he wrote for 
Catholic World News or the Catholic Thing or what? They're mostly from Catholic World News. Some of them date back to Catholic World Report. Some of them he wrote under different pseudonyms. They're all, um, I think everything in this book is uh, written under a pseudonym. Uh, no, there's one that's not uh, in that okay. one. Uh, it's so, uh, oh, but uh, Paglia. Towards, that- yes, on, on, yeah, on, toward the end there, but the rest are. Uh, well, did you determine how many of these essays he had actually written in your publication? Oh, my gosh. It's several thousand. And one of the most painful parts of, well, it wasn't entirely painful, but <laughs> it was sometimes painful preparing this collection to go through all of them and cull out what I thought were the best and the ones that stood up. Uh, the best over time. I say it was painful because a lot of good material is on the cutting cutting room floor, and you could probably fill up another volume. But- well, I, I want to encourage anybody who's listening or watching this podcast to purchase and read this book. It is a phenomenal book. He's a phenomenal Jesuit. And I'm hoping that uh, the reception will be such that there'll be a desire for a second volume, maybe a third volume. Because, you know, there have been a lot of brilliant Jesuits in our history, maybe not so many in our recent history. But uh, I have to say, and I've said it many times, he's the most brilliant Jesuit I've ever met or read in a certain way. Uh, I mean, Father de Lubac was my mentor, and von Balthasar was a Jesuit for a while, and they're brilliant theologians. But nobody had the grasp of, popular culture, uh, music, art, theology, linguistics, uh, politics. And the way he mixed them in was always just a a joy to read. And always you learn something. It was always on point. And uh, you mentioned sarcasm. He he had a great sense of witty sarcasm. It wasn't harsh, uh, biting, uh, angry. It was just kind of playful, whimsical, but certainly if you're on the receiving end of it, you might think it harsh. <laughs> right. It's, it, it was, um, it was relentless. He did not tolerate nonsense very well. He was also a very, very good writer. That's something that comes through. Uh, and as you say, he had a grasp of a lot of different subjects and that came from reading voraciously, and I think that's probably most of what made him such a good writer. But he was he just put together sentences very well, and it's a pleasure for me, even now, looking through this book. And at this point, I've read everything six or seven or eight times, and I still enjoy looking at them just to see the way he put an idea across. It's nice. Yes, to- it, it's, uh, it's always inspiring and, and educative to read him. We, we published previously, a year or so before, this book uh, called Jesuit at Large, in which George Weigel, you know, edits some essays and reviews by uh, Father Mankowski. And they're, they're, again, they're all wonderful. These are longer, I think, than the ones in Dijes Unveiled. But he's got one here on the uh, the Drynan Files, a memorandum. And that's, that's worth the price of the book, just to see how he did the research on what led to Father Drynan becoming a congressman and, and supporting abortion and so on. Uh, so these are kind of complementary uh, in the sense that, the, just, by the way, I want to get this picture up here for those. I mean, that photo of Father Minkowski is absolutely, you know, typological. I mean, it's that look on his face of, <laughs> he's kind of questioning you, but, <laughs> uh, he was a boxer, too, and he, he knew how to throw punches. Um, let's see. I uh, There's also an essay. I'm, I'm not sh- I think it's in here, but it might be in Dajanish, where he takes on inclusive language. And again, that was a tour de force that he did there. But what uh, did any of these uh, essays strike you as like your favorite? Or is that like asking about your favorite child? <laughs> A little bit, because as you're reading them, um, 
one becomes your favorite and then you read another and that's your favorite. Uh, I have advised friends to whom I've given this book to just pick it up and at random leaf through it. And there are a lot of bite-sized pieces here, you know, just a paragraph or two. You can read them in a few seconds. And I say, read, read one of those and maybe it'll grab you and maybe it won't. Then read another. Pretty soon one of them is, will grab you and then you're hooked. And then you sit down with the book and you open it at the beginning and start from the beginning the way a normal reader would. And you'll find your favorites as you go through it. I did yeah. particularly enjoy one. It's early in the book where he, he talks about why we do what we do in, in this section, which, which we called off the record. And I'm, I'm looking for it now in the text. And it's, it's really nicely done explaining why we criticize people in the hierarchy, why we don't seem upbeat about everything that's going on in the church. And uh, it hit me new, anew reading it for, as I say, the seventh or eighth or ninth time. Yeah, I, I think that uh, not only the ones you did select, but the ones you didn't are a little bit like Chesterton. Even he might be writing about some particular incident, but you you get some universal insight out of it. You know, which is which is worthwhile, which is lasting. Right. And then his ability to imitate people, like these dialogues, you know, and Father Smiley, and uh, you know that sort of thing. He was an amazing parodist. Yes. Uh, now the one thing we can't do, Phil, as I'm sure you're aware, we can't publish his collected poetry because he was a wicked poet, not so much original, but he would take, you know, some poem or some song and rewrite it. Uh, and it was hilarious, but he, every so often there'd be something scatological in there, something which would be not for larger public consumption. <laughs> so we, we can't, maybe after we're all dead, someone can publish those things. But, uh, <laughs> there were essays that I would would have liked to see in a book, but I was pretty sure you wouldn't print them uh, <laughs> for that reason. Oh, oh well, try me out, Nick. For volume two, try me out. <laughs> for the next volume. But there is, um, as a, a sort of dessert for someone who's worked his way through this book, there is his really hilarious parody, The Tragedy of Macbeth, which he wrote during the Clinton era in iambic pentameter. And he's just having fun, but it gives you an idea of the talent of this writer that he can keep it up for page after page. And he, he is, he's parodying the Clintons, uh, but he's also maintaining the Shakespearean style after a fashion. Yes, right. no, he's capable of doing that. And uh, also like our friend, Tom Howard, who's also deceased, God bless him, uh, even the emails, you'd, you'd want to preserve the emails he would send because there would always be some uh, some witticism in there or some insight that, that was just expressed in a way that really was, was quite uh, appealing. Right. There, there are an awful lot of people who were in email correspondence with him, more than I realized, uh, have come to me or contacted me since his death and told me that they were also in regular correspondence with him and enjoyed his insights and his advice. And he had a remarkably wide field of friends. Uh, and that way he was much more influential than, than you might've thought. Well, as our, our hearers and viewers may not realize this, but uh, he was censored by the Society of Jesus and not allowed to write uh, unless it was on his specific scholarly field of uh, comparative Semitic linguistics, which of course uh, is a very popular topic for you know wide readership, um, but he was able to write under the pseudonyms, uh, and he also had this correspondence. I mean, he he did so much good with his hands tied behind his back. Yeah, I mean, if he had been allowed simply to, to write and to uh, express himself on contemporary issues, uh, 
uh, I think we would have had a, a, a great star. Everybody would have recognized him as a star. Uh, I believe his, his posthumous influence is going to grow through books like this, because I, I don't think any serious Catholic with a sense of humor, and the two have to go together, I believe, uh, will read these essays and not enjoy them. I mean, you, you, you don't have to work to read Mankowski. You, you, have to, you have to steal yourself to put the thing down to get your other work done. Well, what else should we say about this, Phil, if anything? Maybe the best thing is to do is let people get the book and, and read it and enjoy it for themselves. I think so. I mean, as I say, I think you, you take pick this book up in a bookstore if, if you can and leaf through it, and I think you'll be hooked. Yeah. Or save yourself the time and just order it online. Well, I, that's a good it. point, Phil. I always tell people your, your first option should always be support your local Catholic bookstore. There are many, there's hundreds of them around the country, and they're all run by these very wonderful, committed Catholics who are not making a lot of money doing it. In fact, some of them are losing money doing it, but uh, they keep the word out there. So that's your first choice. Your second choice is Ignatius.com. We have all these books on our website, and we compete with Amazon on price and on speed of delivery now. We have, our warehouse has been upgraded. We've got a big conveyor machine in there and a lot of automation. So you get the book just as fast for less. Uh, and then the third choice, of course, is Leviathan the Behemoth. If you have to go there, that's all right. As a, as a last resort. Right. Good. Well, Phil, please give Lila my regards. In fact, had I thought about it, I would have insisted that she be part of this interview. But maybe next time for volume two, we'll do that. That sounds good. I hope I hope there is a volume two. It's it's this. We have the material. All right. Thanks, Phil, and God bless to you, all our listeners and viewers. Thank you. This podcast has been brought to you by Ignatius Press. We encourage you to check out our books and videos at your local Catholic bookstore or wherever else books and videos are sold. You can also sign up to receive special discounts on books and videos at ignatius.com. We hope you enjoyed this podcast. Please like the podcast on the website or app from which you listen to it. And please tell your friends about it. I'm Mark Brumley, and on behalf of everyone at Ignatius Press, thanks for listening.